Abby, a co host. Thank you kindly. Is that like a Ryan and Kelly? What? Right, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm Kelly. I'm Ryan. <laughs> Let me know when we're good to go. Uh, yes, we should be all, all set. Folks uh, on Zoom, please mute yourself. Folks in the room, please mute your phones. <laughs> All those phones, speakers, mute. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so that's, that's why we say it at the beginning of the meeting. If you need to take a call, just, just step out of the room. Thank you. Good? Yeah, we should be good. We're good to go. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lee Cruz, co-chair of the Fairhaven Community Management Team here. Just want to remind those of you that are on Zoom of the instructions, please mute your mics, use the chat box to communicate with us. We have started recording and the recording is live on Facebook and it will be loaded up to um, YouTube later on. I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask uh, Abby if you would read the roll call of the board members. Yes, Lee Cruz is here. Lovely. Diane. Diane Acton. I'm here. Darlene Casella. Present. Adam Rindall. Present. And Lisa Houghton. Present. And I am here on Zoom. So that is your board. We are all present and accounted for. Wonderful. Jenna, just uh, we, we need to develop um, things to remind people to do when they're live here. We did we did one of them, which is mute your phone or take it off of ring. The other thing is when you speak, we have a wonderful new microphone, but you must look at the mic, point your face toward the microphone when it's time for you to speak and then you'll be picked up. Okay, so uh, we are in the process of establishing quorum. That is happening. It is, we have not ha had that happen yet. So while that is going on, uh, I'm going to ask for someone to, um, uh, we can't approve the minutes because we have an established quorum. So we're going to jump back and come back to it. And we're going to go to the treasurer's report. Charlene. Okay. Hello, everybody. Let me know if you can't hear me. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, we have a balance. Uh, well, we had one expenditure, one reimbursement to Adam who purchased our uh, Zoom, a, a, a yearly subscription to Zoom for $103.62, which is a good deal for a year. So the balance remaining is $5,453.42. And if our microphone works out, we'll have another expenditure for that next month. So any uh, questions or comments, speak now or forever hold your peace. So if there are questions and you are on Zoom, you raise your hand and Abby will, Abby will see you and she'll acknowledge you and let us know. <clears throat> any questions about the treasurer's report? Hearing no questions, we're gonna move on to the next point on our agenda. The next point is our New Haven Police Department report. Lieutenant Fumiati is with us here at the library live and he will be presenting his report. Good evening, everyone. Um, so this month, uh, we had a great month at Fairhaven. Honestly, it's probably one of the better months since I've been a district manager. Um, I'm just gonna touch on a couple of things and then I won't uh, jinx myself at all, by, so I'll keep things very brief. Um, this past month, we saw the only trend that we were seeing uh, is at the southwest corner of Fairhaven by James Street, the lower portion of James Street. There's been a couple of incidents of gunfire. Um, what's interesting about those is they, uh, they appear to be related to uh, a couple of different gatherings over there. The overnight officers have spent more time in those areas and kind of dispersed some of those groups. Uh, but one incident in particular that occurred on uh, Wednesday, April 13th, just after 1 a.m. was a little concerning to me. Uh, so officers responded to the corner of uh, Wolfcott and James Street on a report of gunshots. 
when they got there, what was unusual is they said, uh, the people who were reporting it said, um, you guys were just here. Why, why did you shoot at someone? And so the report was that there was a white SUV that was a Ford Explorer that had red and blue flashing lights uh, and a light bar on it. And so uh, this is incredibly concerning. One, because we're worried. Uh, we know that there were no police officers in that area. So we're concerned that one, there was a stolen police car um, or two, that someone else may be impersonating a police officer in that area. So uh, first thing I did that morning when I woke up was contact uh, some of our intel units to get things going to try to get uh, especially the shooting task force to get them out there to do an investigation we sent officers out there who obtained some uh, great video footage of the incident and they were able to actually uh, determine that there were no lights on when the uh, it was just a white ford explorer newer model uh, there were no light bars there were no light lights on at all um, it was not a police car we've since recovered that vehicle uh, and got a lot of evidence leaning that will eventually lead towards the arrest of the individual who fired those shots. So that's um, went from being very concerning to uh, just a, a real good job of investigative work. Uh, also, the cameras really helped us out. We had a, a, a beautiful video of everything that happened in that situation. So we were able to run with that. And then the other issue uh, that has been a topic of Great concern in Fairhaven is Grand Cafe uh, and that lot there at 124 East Pearl Street. So we've had officers out there pretty much nonstop trying to, to deter some of the activity going on. Uh, if you remember on March, uh, the last meeting uh, for the April meeting, I reported that on March 28th, uh, there was an incident where some of our plainclothes officers uh, observed an individual with a firearm. Um, they gave chase as he ran away from them and they were able to apprehend him. Uh, that individual is Daryl Belton, born in 1972. Uh, Mr. Belton has a, a significant history of uh, gun and drug charges in the city of New Haven. Um, he was out in the area um, in Grand Cafe. Uh, he was the individual that was responsible for the single shot fired, um, one of the only incidents of violence that we've had since uh, you all took over that parking lot and did a fantastic job of uh, having some positive engagement in that parking lot. Uh, Mr. Belton is the, uh, was the suspect. Uh, the shooting task force, again, was given that case. And as of April 14th, uh, Task Force Officer Hurley secured an arrest warrant for Mr. Belton uh, for the gunfire incident that occurred uh, two days before March 26th. That incident, uh, two days before, officers apprehended him with a, with a firearm. Mr. Belton was charged uh, with uh, an unlawful discharge of a firearm, reckless engagement in the first degree, criminal possession of a firearm, and carrying a pistol without a permit. He was given a $200,000 bond, and he's currently in DOC custody for one firing that gun, and then also uh, possession of that firearm when officers apprehended him. Um, otherwise, we haven't seen any other trends in the district. We are actually trending down in just about every category. Um, and so I will leave it at that for the month of April. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. Uh, we'd like to ask you if there are any questions here in the room. I, I, I have one on Zoom from Maureen. Yeah, while we're doing that, we're gonna ask people on Zoom to uh, send a signal through chat and then uh, Adam or Adam will let us know. So we have a question from who? Maureen. Maureen, please unmute yourself and speak your question. Thank you. This is early days, but you know, the legislature just passed a juvenile uh, reform bill. Um, just uh, initially, has that, um, those cases of repeat offenders in uh, individuals under 18, has that been a real problem in Fairhaven? Uh, can you be more specific with that? The bill um, changed some of the um, accountability uh, for offenders who are repeat offenders but are under the age of eight, 18. Um, and it didn't change what court they would go to, but I think it's, it's up the, um, the uh, that, um, you know, I haven't read the details, but I'm just wondering if there's been a pattern of young adults that are repeat offenders. Okay, that's a good question. Yes, thank you. I, I, understand, I think I understand the question now. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't say there's a pattern. Um, I think that there are some individuals who are under the age of 18 who are engaged in some um, criminal activity. 
um, in, in Fairhaven. Uh, generally, we're pretty quick to identify them and either one, uh, get them arrested and get them into services or just get them into services. And so um, honestly, the bill doesn't really change much in, in Fairhaven from the way we're doing things as it is. Um, I haven't looked into the bill specifically, uh, but nothing has come across my desk that would change any of the way we do business uh, as it is from day to day. Um, if we're catching people who are, the officers are, are really good at identifying uh, people who are engaged in this criminal activity. Um, and it's, it's honestly not that many, one, there's not that many people who are engaged in criminal activity in Fairhaven. Uh, a couple of people make it seem like, you know, crime, what it, we've seen in some of our reports, you've seen how one person being out can affect our, our crime stats pretty significantly when they're on a tear. And so we look quickly to identify the people and then use all of our partnerships to reach out and whether it's arrest or um, any sort of resources we can offer. So um, I'll, I'm interested in, in that bill though. So I will take a look at it. Thank you. Good, thank you. Any other questions? Someone in the room have a question? Anyone? Anyone else on Zoom have a question? Hearing none, uh, thank you very much, Lieutenant Kumiati, for your report. Uh, next on the agenda, we have Carmen Mendez. She's not in the room with us. Carmen, are you on Zoom? Yes, I am on Zoom. How's everyone? Good. Good. Can Please, you hear me? Uh, give us your report, Carmen. Okay, so for the month of April, I've had, um, basically my report has conversations regarding community issues. On Clay Street, there are many properties that have returned to non-compliance. Next week, I will revisit those properties and if necessary, I will issue a notice of violation or if warranted, a civil citation. I don't know if you recall, but some time ago, I was it was one of my project uh, street targeted areas and um, it improved for a little while, but it's back on non-compliance. And so I'll be going back there to see. It's one of the hardest streets in, in Fairhaven to deal with, actually. But I'll be going back there next week and notice the violation will be issued or again, civil citations. Uh, I've, had that, I've had conversations with Jeff Pesco-Salido regarding the trimming of the trees on Dover Street. He explained to me that the, he's waiting until the trees bloom before they can decide to prune them to improve the lighting levels on that street. <clears throat> On Exchange Street, I spoke with the resident representative of Exchange Street between Ferry and Poplar Street, and they have requested traffic calming speed bumps. I've emailed Giovanni Zinn, our city, city engineer, regarding this request. On Ferry Street, I spoke to Alicia Cloud about the lighting levels on Grand Avenue and Ferry Street. Many residents have complained that the levels are too low at night. I will have to get all the poll numbers and give them to traffic and parking for their evaluation. I literally have to go from pole to pole, take down the numbers so that they can then evaluate them and see if they can up the levels of lighting along Grand and uh, Ferry Street. A crosswalk was requested for safety issues at the intersection of Ferry and Wolcott Street and Ferry and Salt and Salt Street. I've also emailed Giovanni Zinn about this request. Residents along Ferry Street are requesting traffic calming measures be installed throughout Ferry Street. Residents are complaining about speeding cars down Ferry Street, especially at night. Grand Avenue. I spoke with Frank Alvarado Sr. regarding the walking tour of the Grand Avenue that occurred on March 30th, 2022. He brought me up to date on the results of that meeting and sent me related reading materials. The next scheduled meeting will be tomorrow at 6 at noon. Tomorrow, May 6 at noon. Strong School. Marvin informed me that all the brush was cut back, the litter against the fence was removed, and the trees had been pruned. He also stated that his staff visits the playground every Monday to check on its cleanliness status. Marvin, however, will be retiring next month, and I don't know who his replacement will be. So there might be a little time, we might have a little skank going on over there, but as soon as Marvin knows who may be replacing him, I will let you know. The corner sidewalks of Grand and Clinton Avenue have still not been repaired, but I will stay on this issue until it gets done. There is a, I don't know if you know, the walk-in clinic right around the corner on Grand Avenue, right around the corner there's a tree that has uprooted the sidewalk. It's really made a mess of it, it's a trip ha tripping hazard. And as I said, I will stay on that issue until it gets fixed. 77 Grand Avenue, Dr. Alam's at walk-in clinic. He has a broken window above the door 
and I spoke to his assistant, and she's informed me that the window is on order and will be installed toward the end of May. 118 Grand Avenue, Carol Leon, I've called her several times to schedule a meeting regarding the status of her property and have yet to receive a call back. I have also texted her to make it less cumbersome and more adaptable to her schedule, but as of today, I have not heard from her. Inspector 118 Grand Avenue dumpster area. Dumpsters at the time were empty, but there was litter everywhere. When I speak to Carol Leon again, I will mention it to her. Humphrey and Lombard Street. I called Jeff Pesciolito again regarding the cleanup of the Humphrey and Lombard Street underpass. He told me that he will get it done and that it was on work order. But he mentioned to me that he was down 15 crew members. So he'd have to wait for a while before he can get it done. Regarding that same Humphrey and Lombard Street underpass, I spoke with Valicia Cloud. Uh, she had given me a contact for the light. It turned out to be the wrong company. I was then told to call the State Department of Transportation. I called them, but it wasn't theirs either. They also gave me the name of a company that they thought did the light. But when I called them, it was not them. So I will have to continue to investigate this issue because the lighting levels at that site under the underpass are also too low to be safe. Lewis Street. Alder Miller, Jim Tercio, and I are working on 8, 12, and 14 Lewis Street to resolve neighbors' complaints about those properties. Lombard Street, 153 Lombard Street. I spoke to the co-owner and the maintenance person regarding trash cans and overflowing garbage, but that has been resolved. If the issue begins again, we will, of course, open up another case. Alder News, Alder Santagra and I are meeting to go through his ward on Monday, May 10th at 4 o'clock in the evening. Demolition. Wolcott and Lombard Street. I've called and emailed co-worker Jose Romero for an update on the demolition of the garages on 15 Wolcott Street and 465-467 Lombard Street. Both of the, these addresses will be getting letters sent via state marshal so that they will be demolished. Anyway, I can go on and on, but if anyone has any questions for me, please feel free to ask me. If you have a complaint or, or anything that you'd like me to know about, please call me. My telephone number is 203-410-6527. You can call me about anything and it will remain personal and confidential. Are there any questions for me? Hi, uh, Carmen. Uh, can we have questions from Zoom, please? Uh, I don't see no. any at the moment. No questions on Zoom. Okay. Anyone uh, in the room have a question? I, I did for uh you were said the the you were trying to look up who does the lighting for the Lombard Street overpass, right? Yes. There are some uh, blue and violet lights underneath that underpass. Yes. Yeah, uh you should reach out to J.R. Logan. Yeah. He is the person who kind of took the lead on those colored lights. J.R. Logan? Yes. Is this a business or is this an individual? It's an individual. He was working with he was working with the city engineer and I believe also with Amtrak because the bridge belongs to Amtrak, but definitely with the city engineer. Carmen JR engineer. lives on East Pearl Street, and I just put his um, email address in the chat box as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm so glad I was here this evening. That's why you need to bring stuff up at the meeting. Then <laughs> together we know a lot more than individuals. Absolutely. Thank you. And, okay, so we have a question for Carmen from the room here at the library live. Please ask your question. Yeah, what about the flooding when it rains under that underpass? Is it, can, can anything be done about that? That's a question. I will I will ask, I will send an email out to Giovanni Zinn, he's the city engineer. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. It floods. It floods terribly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is, but I will. I will email Giovanni Zinn. Thank you about that underpass. Yes. Yeah. No. The one next to it's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, just one more offer. Any questions on Zoom? Any questions here in the room? Hearing none, we're going to move on to our next point on the agenda. 
So we have decided to maintain a point on the agenda, point number six, having to do with um, our uh, civilian review board. And uh, Jay Wan is here. Jay Wan is here, Lee. Jay Wan is here. On Zoom. Uh, Jay Wan, yep. um, please, uh, if you could unmute yourself and if you feel comfortable, please show yourself so that people can may know you. And if you do have something to report, we'd love to hear it. But if not, just so people can see who you are. Good evening, everyone. Hi. This is uh, J. Juan Carter. Um, I, I represent this district on the CRB. Um, I have already submitted the requirements for those who like to file complaints. Um, and at this moment, I do not have anything to report. Um, there has been some changes with our board and I'm in the middle of making sure I'm up to date with those changes on how I can report back to our team. Thank you very much, uh, Jay Wan. For those of you that have not noticed, if you go to the very end of our agenda, the process for reporting any issues with the police is outlined there. So um, since there was nothing to report, I will assume there are no questions. Is that correct? Uh, seeing no one on Zoom at the moment, so yeah. Any questions live here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dewan, for coming. You're always welcome. Uh, we're gonna be looking for you about once every three, four months, unless something comes up that you wanna report to us, let us know. You always have a space on our agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So that, yeah, thank you. So that concludes the, um, the, uh, the section of our agenda that has to do with reports from various people that work either with or for the city. Um, I'm looking for the place on the agenda where we put um, Lisa's announcement. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize, yes. Yep, I, I, I apologize. Yes, uh, I did forget Kathleen from Economic Development. My apologies. Uh, Kathleen, are you on? And if you are, please unmute yourself and give us your report. I don't believe Kathleen is with us on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, so. I don't see her. Okay, so we do not have someone here from Economic Development. Uh, is there any economic development news that anyone is aware of uh, that you'd like to share with the community? Something very concrete and specific? If, uh, if anyone is thinking, I will share with you that this very evening, the City Plan Commission is meeting and the topic is 190 River Street which is an existing building that's uh, um, from some people's perspective at risk of falling down. And the question is uh, how to handle the demolition of that. And it's not easy and straightforward because there's some history to that building. And what I mean by there's some history, I'm not talking about politics. There's literally history in that, in that area having to do with the 29th Infantry Brigade, which is the black soldiers that went to the Civil War and they left from that location. So there are some of us that have very strong feelings to just slow the process down and be careful because there's history to be preserved there. So that meeting is going on right now. I plan to attend as soon as we finish here. Um, and uh, what we're asking for is a continuation of the process so that we can understand you know, what might be lost while at the same time, we are concerned about human life, right? And so we're not gonna be crazy, but just uh, slow the process down and be careful, make sure we know the history. But couldn't they preserve the building? Uh, we're not gonna discuss it here. I just want people to know if they're interested city plan meeting this evening. Where is River Street? River Street is the last street beyond Chapel. It parallels Chapel and runs from James yeah. all the way to Front. That's, that's River Street. Okay, so then having had that, then item number eight is uh, not a usual item on our agenda. 
It is a, a, a reminder announcement that should be made by the person whose announcement it is, and that is our recording secretary, uh, Lisa. So please, Lisa, if you would share with us. Thank you, Lee. Um, well, it, it's sort of bittersweet news, but I'm officially retiring from Mary Wade um, in the coming months. And um, it's been a privilege and an honor to serve the Fairhaven uh, Community Management Team as the recording secretary, even though it's been such a short time. Uh, I've really enjoyed my experience. I've enjoyed my previous years attending the meetings, representing Mary Wade. Um, so um, I, I did um, alert the executive board um, in recent weeks. And so I know that you'll need to be able to uh, fill this position once I have officially retired. Thank you very much, Lisa. So the implications of this is that we have a vacancy in the executive um, uh, committee. It is for the reporting secretary whose responsibility it is to, to take, uh, edit, deliver the minutes of the meeting. It's a very important role. So we are letting everyone know, please, if you are a voting member, in, in any of the different you know, categories that we have of voting members, residents and, and business owners and whatever, you are a voting member and you would like to take on this role. Uh, before this, uh, David, before Lisa, David Weinreb did a lot of work with other people to streamline the process. Lisa picked up on that and has improved it further. So it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel is already made. You just have to roll the wheel. <laughs> so if you are interested in doing this, please alert Diane or myself, or you can write to fairhavencmt.org, which is our group email. And then we will uh, consider if more than one person wants to run for the position, then we have a, a vote. On that, if there's only one person, then that person acts as reporting secretary until the time of our next election. Any questions? Um, while people are thinking of any possible questions, congratulations on your retirement, Lisa. Thank you very much. Any questions on Zoom? Uh, I see none. Any questions in the room? I see none. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to move on. Now we are at where I thought we were before, which is um, we have, for those of you that are new, we have um, a portion of our agenda that's dedicated specifically to uh, the outline from a retreat that we did for planning in our community. And so the first category of work of our vision is in the area of responsive and transparent government. And uh, within that, we have economic development. And I see nothing on the agenda under that topic. I just, since we have a short um, agenda, I would just open it up. If, if there's anyone that has something they would like to say, some information they would like to share about transparent government or economic and community development, um, please speak now. Okay, hearing nothing, we'll move on from that agenda item. The next item on the agenda is any issue having to do with environment or immigration. And again, we have nothing on the agenda, but if someone has information they would like to share regarding an environmental issue or immigration, Again, I hear no, no one. And then we're moving on to the next point, health, housing, and public safety. We have, um, do we have Mark Jenkins on? Mark, are you present? Hey. Uh, I don't see Mark on the Zoom, though he did. Yeah, he's not in Zoom currently. Okay, and obviously he's not here in the room. He requested some time, he's not here. 
We'll move on. Should uh, Abby or Adam, should you see him come tap in, uh, please let me know and, and we can take them further along in the agenda. Then the next uh, uh, request came from Dr. Sue Lagarde of the Fairhaven Community Health Center. It is regarding a parking lot. Uh, Dr. Lagarde, are you with us? I am here. Thank you, Lee. Um, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Yeah, it should be just, it should be allowed for anyone in chat to start. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Um, so, are people seeing that? Yes, yes. Can somebody yeah. say yes. <laughs> yes, we see okay. it here at the live, so. Okay, so I think everybody in the room hopefully can recognize this is sort of a, a schematic aerial view of our health center, right? This is uh, on Grand Avenue. This is the main clinic. Uh, this is Grand Avenue. People drive in this way, and this is our parking lot, right? The only difference is this schematic doesn't show the, the fact that it's usually very full to capacity because it's, it's simply not sufficient to meet the needs of our patients and certainly not of our staff. Um, I um, We have started to look at uh, uh, improving, number one, improving as well as expanding the parking lot. And specifically, we have um, had some, and, and I, I want to start out by making it clear that we're, we're still early days, but I wanted to bring this to this group to let make sure everybody is on the same page and knows what we're thinking about and get your feedback. And I want to point out at the top here where it says community relations at fhchc.org. If, you know, if anybody has any comments, any questions uh, following this, they can reach out to me or they can reach out through this um, uh, email that we email inbox that we've set, set up. Have already um, uh, spoken or at least communicated with the residents and the owners along Wolsey Street about these plans. So this is not news to them. Uh, I, I'm very pleased to say that uh, the only feedback we got uh, from uh, our neighbors was, was positive feedback so far. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased about that. Uh, let me go to the next slide. This is a schematic of what I just showed you, right? So this is the main clinic here. These are three buildings, 80, um, 83, 80, oh, I'm trying to think of the right, 83, 85, and 87 Woolsey. There's a little used to be a garage, but it's somewhat uh, in, it's in very poor condition right now that's right here. And this is our lot. Typically the flow of traffic comes in this way and goes out either here and out back here out to Grand or comes in here and goes my little arrow, my little arrow is right here and can go out here to Woolsey. So what we are proposing, what we we're, we're, what we're hoping, and the other thing I want to say is we are working with a local firm, TPA. They are local here to Fairhaven to help us think through how we can design this in a way that is um, an improvement for the community in terms of not only more parking, but you know just a, a pretty you know a, something that looks a lot nicer than than what there is there today. Uh, and I think we have Oliver Gaffney on the call tonight. If, if he, you know, if anybody wants any questions, he can uh, chime in. So here's what we are proposing. So here you can see today, this is the state of the art today. We have 47 parking spaces. This is where we're hoping to be. We, we want to uh, take down those three houses, uh, put in more greenery and expand it in this fashion such that it will basically, um, approximately an increase of about 50%. We'll go to 67 parking spaces. Um, the One of the advantages of this, in addition to the additional parking, uh, it's something I learned and I'll share with all of you. If you look up here, this is the current state. Because there's a driveway here, there's a driveway here, and there's a driveway here, in addition to the driveway for the main parking lot, um, there's limited parking along Woolsey here. By, by doing the current design, we take away those parking lots. So we're actually increasing parking on Woolsey as well. And, and that's obviously not in this, in this uh, tally here. There's, we, we've gone from four driveways to one driveway in, in this model. Um, things that we're, we're um, 
also looking at is how do we make this a much more attractive place in terms of greenery. Uh, one of the things that we're seriously looking at is uh, electric chargers, maybe one or two on site. This is still in very much in discussion about how this would use, but I, I think everybody knows that you know, more and more we're going to uh, vehicles that are uh, electrically powered. Um, stormwater management, how water is drained, that all of that is going to be addressed at the same time. Um, and right now our hope, uh, although a lot, a lot has to happen, is that as, as we go through this process that by um, sometime in 2023, uh, hopefully earlier rather than later, we will have, th this will have been uh, accomplished, but we still have lots of steps. We wanna get the community's input. We have to go to zoning because there are some variances that have to have to be approved, um, but wanted to bring it to this group. And I'd like to just open it for comments, suggestions, questions, what have you. Okay, you've heard uh, uh, Dr. Lagarde's presentation. Are there any questions from the people who are on Zoom? Yes, Anthony, take it away. Hi, Suzanne. Uh, this Hi. is Anthony with with uh, Save the Sound, um, and I just wanted to ask whether there's uh, been any whether you're thinking about doing some green stormwater infrastructure when you do this retrofit. Um, it's something that we could absolutely look at with you. So, what kind of infrastructure? Can you repeat that? I just uh, Green, green stormwater infrastructure. So it's uh, like bioswales that you see around the city um, to, um, to allow the water, use native plants to filter the stormwater and capture the stormwater in, in uh, engineered swales, as opposed to doing gray sort of piped infrastructure underground. So I absolutely can bring that back to TPA. I, I, I don't know, Oliver, I think yeah. Oliver's on the call. Can you yeah. address that? Uh, Dr. Lagarde, if you'll indulge me. And Anthony, it's good to see you. Uh, Oliver Gaffney, landscape architect, TPA oh, hey, here in New Haven. We, we, I think it's a, a great question and I think it's, it has a little bit of a challenging response. This is a site that's in what's called a combined sewer area. So mm -hmm. all the sewers date from about 1880 to 1885, they're brick lined. Anytime it rains, anytime the toilet flushes, all that water is going to the same place. So one of our challenges mm -hmm. as we design the site is making sure that the water we're collecting on site by building a parking lot isn't going into that same sewer and overloading the water treatment facility. So I don't know that we're gonna be able to manage the amount of water we need to capture to satisfy WPCA just in bioswales or rain gardens. But what we can do is build a treatment train, retain the water that we need to retain in the underwater galleries, uh, the, sorry, the subsurface uh, retention galleries that Dr. Lagarde showed on that last slide, but work with, uh, you know, catchment areas, little uh, inlets in the islands or tree cells, other places where we can put stormwater that will nourish plants and, and landscape items, but at the same time have a hydraulic connection to, to where we need to store water to manage it to meet city and uh, WPCA regulations. Yeah, that's, um, it, it's great to, it's great to hear um, the thought process there. And I'd, I don't want to take up um, time on this meeting, but I just want to put that offer out there that um, be um, more than happy, Oliver, to to uh, if there's interest to spend a little time and and uh, look at what what uh, is possible at that site because it, it looks like just from the the basic designs, which look great, like there might, there might be some some cool options there. Sounds awesome. <clears throat> We have a, totally open. I mean, this is what this is for. We, we really welcome and, and want this kind of input. We really want to make sure that we, as we do this, that we do it in the best possible way for, for, for the Fairhaven community. Any other questions from the people who are on Zoom? We have, I have a question. Oh, we had, Liz actually had their hand up first. So go ahead, Liz. And then we'll get Thank to you, you. Carmen. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Lagarde. Um, quick question. I, I understand the great need and importance for additional parking at the clinic. I, I live a couple houses down. My concern is kind of twofold. Um, I just don't want to see more housing taken away. And also, um, 
<coughs> like, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, disrespectful or anything like that, but I, I'm just kind of concerned. Like, I don't want to see that more houses get bought and then torn down, especially because these houses are like 200 years old for the historical, um, you know, scant viewpoint, but also for housing as well. Um, so it, it, once this project um, really starts to take off and, and the uh, you get to the point of demolition and everything, um, is that going to be it? Like, there's not going to be any more trying to buy up more houses on our street and and tearing them down. So, so thanks for that question. Let me let me just explain to you what's going to happen. So, we do own these three houses. As I said, this is 83, 85, and 87. 83 we have owned for like four years. It is vacant. If you walked by it, it's boarded up. And the reason for that is it has some very serious foundational problems. Um, it's it's uninhabitable as it is today, um, and and would require huge uh, in, in, you know input of effort and resources to make it habitable. This one is uh, we have we have we have used this for offices for many years. I mean I, I've been at Fairhaven now for nine years, and it was offices when I came. It's still offices. We're going to relocate those offices. This is this is a two two residential home right now. We've already had conversations with the current two residents and are committed to helping them find acceptable, suitable housing. You know, we're, we're going to work with them as hard, closely as we can to, to make that happen. Um, I, I hear you, and I and I. Oh, in, in terms of your concerns about historical, yes, they are about a, they're they're over a hundred years old for for sure. But we've already uh, submitted. Uh, um, I don't know what the term is, but an application, if you will, to the State Historical Preservation Office. And in their opinion, there's no historic value to any of these. And from their perspective, they, they don't have a problem with removing them. Uh, I, I personally think the bigger issue is we don't want to impact residential uh, uh, um, opportunities. But right now, the, the only residential opportunity here is there are, in fact, two. and it, and, and we're going to do our very best to make sure that those folks have uh, suitable housing. Um, what, hap what happens in the future? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I certainly we, I can guarantee you that today we don't have any kind of a plan to buy up all the, you know, I'm trying to get myself out of here. I don't know if I can. Um, oh, you're not presenting anymore. To oh, I thought I was, I've been pointing. Sorry, I, I closed it oh, when some of the other people started asking questions. Yeah. I've been pointing to this all the time. Oh my God, <laughs> so sorry. I apologize. Uh, well, anyway, there are three houses there. One of them is basically uninhabitable. The other is offices and the third is, 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 is um, inhabited. Um, it is certainly not part of our strategic plan to buy up houses and, and tear them down. Uh, uh, there is a reality though that I, you know, we are in that site that is our location and we do need to try to help patients be able to park, pay, you know, staff be able to park. I, we know that we, you know, our neighbors on Woolsey, you know, we use parking spots that, 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 that they would otherwise use. We, we know that. Uh, we just don't have, a, a, you know, good solutions uh, to, those, to those problems. But I'm hopeful that this is going to have a minor, I think on, on my own opinion is on 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 the. If I look at the balancing act, you know the additional parking space that you're going to have, we're going to have on Woolsey. The fact that the space is just going to look a, an awful lot nicer than it looks today, uh, we'll make sure that we do our very best with 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 stormwater, you know, runoff. Um, I think overall, hopefully, it will be a plus. And as as today, the plan is that you know when we're not in, in business, so after eight o'clock at night or on weekends and holidays, anybody can park there, right? We don't lock it, we don't close it. Anybody can, can park there uh, during those times. So, uh, you know, I, that's the best I can do right now with an answer to your question, Liz. Oh, well, no problem. Thank you so much. That, that does, you know, answer the question and kind of reassure. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. And then there was a question, I believe, from Carmen, who was the other person? Yeah. Yes, I- um... Go ahead, Carmen. Dr. Lagarde, I am just concerned as, as a resident in Fairhaven that a parameter of your development is respectful to the people who are living next to it. So that, you know, a fence may be needed or green, there a lot of green should be put there so as not to affect their privacy. 
uh, maybe muffle noise mm -hmm. and make it look better for the people who live there because you, you are going to be impacting their daily lives. And it's important that you think about them and, and put yourself in their position if you live there. What would you want to be looking at? How would you want to feel? Uh, so, you know, I'm putting that issue out to you and letting you know that that was one of my concerns. So, so I hear you, and, and, and it's one of my concerns as well. I mean, we've already instructions to Oliver and his team that we want to put as much greenery as we can there. Uh, I, I firmly believe the space is going to look much better uh, when this is done than it looks today. Uh, and that's the, and that certainly is our, our, our goal and our, you know, what we're aiming for too. I, I, I understand it. It's, it's, it's a challenge, right? We, we, we want to be good neighbors. We really do want to be good neighbors. Uh, but part of that, I think, is also with providing uh, more, it's, you know, whether it's still enough, I don't know, but more, more parking so that patients can easily access our services and, uh, and that, that impacts the neighborhood as well. So, uh, but I see Oliver taking notes. So, uh, it, it, and my plan, by the way, is to keep coming back to this group, assuming you, you want me to, uh, because we're early stages in this. And so as we have, um, you know, more, more information, I want to come back and make sure that A, you're informed, B, I get your, your feedback again, uh, I reference you to that email, community relations at fhchc.org. We also have a general in, info at, FHC, at fhchc.org. That works too. Uh, just, send us, just send us an email and uh, I give you my word, we will get back to you promptly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lagarde. Uh, anyone else have a question? Yeah, Dennis. 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 This will be the last one just to keep us on the agenda, but that doesn't mean that people can't write questions to Dr. Lagarde in the chat or reach out to her directly at the clinic. Dennis, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Thank you. Dr. Lagarde, obviously this is in the very early stages for the project, but are you anticipating increased vehicle traffic exiting onto Grand Avenue? I'm going to... I'm going to deflect that one to Oliver, what, what, with the current design, what, what do we expect that to do? So it, it's a great question, Dennis. And that's something that we're working with uh, Janine and others at Fairhaven Community Health right now to figure out what is the safest and optimal way for different vehicles to circulate, right? They get deliveries that are very large trucks. They have smaller patient vehicles that are circulating. What is the optimal width for drive aisles? We are trying to not negatively contribute traffic to either Woolsey Street or Grand Avenue that's not appropriate for that thoroughfare. So big trucks don't want to go out to Woolsey, don't want to be, you know, have people waiting on Grand Avenue to get out and have them, you know, backing up and queuing up. So we're going to be studying that in further detail, just making sure that, again, things that the city is going to care about. Is this a safe parking lot? You know, are people able to get to where they need to go and there's no confusion? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you again. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, and um, stay tuned and please keep in touch. Thank you. Okay. We're going to, in the interest of time, move on in the agenda. I'm going to take the fact that we finished this section to go back to a few things on the agenda very quickly. First one is do we have form? No, we do not. Oh, no. So um, this has become a problem. And uh, so we'll have to address that in the executive committee meeting in terms of when we can approve minutes and the like, okay? So then uh, I'm going to go back on the agenda to economic development. Uh, I understand Kathleen Perlak is with us. Thank you very much, Dr. Lagarde. Uh, please stay as long as you wish. Um, Kathleen, you. are you on? Kathleen, Kathleen Krolak, are you with us? I say she she's in chat but muted. So there you go. Hi, I'm here. I'm sorry. No, no sorry. problem. Kathleen, please uh, give us your report. I don't have new news. Uh, the MOUs that are currently being um, negotiated, if you will, are, are not complete. Uh, being uh, gigantic, but it, it's not near its expiration either. So I mean, it just continues, just due process. Um, 
and strong school to the RFP is not out yet. And I don't think there are, if anyone have questions for me, because I, I don't think we have any new uh, projects. Okay, so first on Zoom, are there any questions about economic development for Kathleen? I see no hands or chat requests. Okay, here in the room, do we have any questions regarding economic development? Hearing none, thank you very much uh, for joining us, Kathleen. We always appreciate having you. you at our meetings. Oh, no, likewise. Thank you very much. Okay. And then one more before we go back to the regular schedule. Uh, I understand that Mark Jenkins from the Harm Reduction Program is with us via Zoom. Mark, if you're with us, unmute yourself and please uh, tell us what you wanted to share. Oh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for the invite. It really was my uh, intention to, to be a uh, at the library this evening. Uh, <laughs> as as schedules have it, uh, things changed here. So uh, I apologize. Um, I, I guess I don't even know really where to start because there is quite a bit. However, I, I don't know what uh, if if any Lee or Lieutenant Fumiati, you all have discussed at this meeting, uh, but it is our intent after coming together with uh, a team there in Fairhaven to develop an engagement center uh, in the rear of 229 Grand Avenue. Uh, and what it would seek to do is engage three populations that uh, are in that area and have tended to be, uh, there's, you know, different things, uh, individuals who are hard to reach, uh, some who just may like kind of loiter as part of just the, even their social networking or trying to find work or being out there for work and then the sex workers that are in the area also. And that would be to actually engage that population and draw them out of public eye, if you will, and into a congregate area where we could, you know, a couple of different things. One, provide services. Two, provide somewhere safe and off and out of uh, eyesight to be able to engage them. And uh, then also to be able to move forward with something we had proposed to the city, which is our sort team, which would allow us to engage members of the community, and give them some work going back into the community, cleaning up various areas. I talked about that last piece, you know, some time ago here at this level. And, you know, since then we've purchased a vehicle. We have all of the tools, supplies and everything necessary to move that forward. Uh, and it's just been a process now working with the city to secure funding for, for that back end, if you will, uh, where we can provide the additional services. Uh, I know I'm skipping skipping over a lot. This is like really 100% uh, from the hip. Uh, and if there's any questions or Lee, if there are any questions you have or would like to, to, to focus on. Mark, if you would just tell people about the survey that's being conducted and then we'll open it up to questions. Yes, so there's also been a survey and I don't, you know what, I, and forgive me for not being prepared. Again, how this did not stay in, in, in hindsight and on my calendar is 100% is, uh, my fault. But there is a survey, there's a, a QR code available that is being circulated throughout Fairhaven. It's been put up in some businesses. And there's also been some foot actual surveying of members of the community uh, to see from various public residents, business owners, 
uh, and people who work in the Fairhaven district to see what their opinion of this would be. And, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't see anybody really else. I don't know, Lieutenant Fumiati, or can you, did I leave anything? Yeah, sure, out? Mark. I can, I can elaborate on a couple of different could you, things. Could you please? <laughs> yeah, sure. No problem. Um, so a couple, maybe two months ago, uh, we started putting a group together of, of uh, stakeholders in Fairhaven who are interested in um, improving the community and also looking at how we can make something distinctly Fairhaven uh, and, and uh, meet the needs of Fairhaven. And so um, Mark uh, was kind of a natural partner in this. And so the group is assembled and we looked at uh, addressing three different populations and trying to do some significant outreach to those populations. Um, one are the sex workers that are um, in the area of Grand and Ferry. We've predominantly focused on Grand and Ferry to start there and move out uh, to the rest of the district. And so we're looking at three separate groups. One, uh, and these are just people who would identify as being in those groups. And so um, we're looking at three separate groups. Uh, the first group would be sex workers. Uh, the second group is people who are suffering from addiction that are uh, generally homeless, but in and around Fairhaven. Um, they use the, the, um, the main roads, they're engaged at the businesses, they're up and down Grand Avenue. Uh, in that area, we're looking at how, how can we reach out to those two groups. And then the third group is um, generally um, undocumented men of Hispanic descent that are in the area of Grand and Ferry. Um, and so we're looking at, generally speaking, uh, they may be people who are looking for uh, day labor, their day laborers are looking for work. Um, and then uh, they're also, uh, if they don't get work or after work, they're uh, engaged in some public drinking. Um, and so we're pretty much recognized that like the police department in this situation, um, we're not going to arrest our way out of this problem. And so how can we come up with some tools to better engage people and um, create an environment where uh, it's not conducive for crime? And so uh, the group that was together has been working over the last couple of weeks um, to really look at what that looks like. So surveys were conducted with uh, each of the populations that this particular place would be servicing. And so um, looking for them to give their input on rules um, that they would want to see at this place or uh, different services they would like, what they were looking for, uh, what would help them in these situations. Um, some of their insight was actually pretty, pretty amazing uh, to hear what they were interested in and what would help them. And then uh, the next phase is reaching out to the community and seeing what uh, the community perception is of Grand Avenue, specifically looking for people who live in Fairhaven, uh, who are around Grand Avenue a lot, or people who are business owners on, in Grand Avenue, or people who um, are uh, come to Fairhaven to shop and um, just what their perception is and also what their feelings are towards harm reduction, uh, general perceptions of crime. Uh, we're looking for to do a study beforehand. And then once the center opens, uh, do a study then afterwards. Uh, the engagement center would bring in a whole bunch of different people to uh, do outreach specifically to those three groups. Um, but also it would be a place that would be a safe place for uh, people to go. Um, as I'm sure many of you have seen, a lot of these people that are out on the street are just looking for a social setting. Um, they're looking for a social environment and um, some of the places in Fairhaven over the years have just become those places to gather. So we're looking to try to positively change that behavior uh, with I think some, some really awesome engagement with a lot of people who really care and are really invested in Fairhaven. Uh, Lee and Mark, is that pretty much what we're doing? That sounds good to me. Yeah, I think you articulated a heck of a lot better than, than I was at the time. Thank you very much. So no problem, Mark. I'll it's just, a team. I'll just, I'll just add that the survey is available on paper here in the library, and it has been circulated. The, online, the clickable version is in our minutes and on our social media if you have any difficulty finding the survey, which is available in Spanish and English, just write to fairhavencmt at gmail.com and we can either send it to you or point to you to a place where you can take the survey. We want as many Fairhaveners or people that work in Fairhaven to take this survey as possible. We have a question here in the room, and then we'll go to anyone who's on Zoom with a question. Yeah, where is 229 Grand Avenue, 299, whatever the address was? Yeah. What's the nearest cross street? Would that be Ferry? It would be. Yeah. So it is basically behind where uh, Naval Works New Horizon is, across oh, okay. the street from uh, the post office. Yeah, and not, then behind not, okay. That. 
Exactly. If you're facing a building that's to the left of the bank, Santander Bank, there's a package store on the first floor, clothing store. New Vine Church. New Vine Church is on the second floor. So we'll be talking about the rear of that property. We'd have some privacy screening up. Initially, the entrance would be on Grand Avenue. Uh, the idea being once we're up and beginning to engage folk that there is an entry from Ferry and that's where traffic would be diverted to come in through an entrance on Ferry. Do we have any questions on Zoom? Uh, I just wanna mention that Dave uh, Weinreib actually did post the link in the Zoom chat as well. So if you're on Zoom, you can just look at, click the link right there. And if you are not on Zoom, you're in the room, it will be in the minutes and then you'll be able to click on it then. Mark, thank you very much for your presentation. Not a problem. Thank you, Lee. I have to say, someone said, thanks for spearheading this. It says, not me. Uh, Lieutenant Fumiati mentioned a team. This really is unlike anything that uh, I've been a part of to see how this community has come together and really sought to bring this and make this happen is, uh, has, has been actually, uh, you know, magical. So I, I, I applaud everyone that sits around that table. It's, it's been amazing it's thus far. Thank you very much. We're gonna move on in our agenda to the category art, culture, and the library. And the first presentation in this, uh, in this area of work is New Spiral. Ala, are you with us on Zoom? Hey folks, um, this is actually Joy and my partner Isaac is about to hop on. We are here as the representatives of New Spiral. So thank you for having us. Um, and I'm going to share my screen so you can see what we're talking about. Isaac, are you here? I sure am. How are folks tonight? Give me one second. Good, good to see you. I saw your painting earlier. Oh, Isn't thank it you. Cool? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Working on my own mural right now. <laughs> okay. So um, for those who don't know, we're New Spiral. We came out of intention after dealing with a gentleman um, in organization last year who were, weren't really aligned with some of the principles that he spoke on. Um, specifically, the organization is called uh, CT Murals Rise Up. Um, and we as a collective were like, well, we want to make equitable art. And we want to, you know, add art to New Haven, a place that we stay, a place that we love. And so we created New Spiral. Um, we also reached out to Adrian Jefferson about the situation that we were going through and wanted to start a new collective. And she was like, hey, well, I have money from, you know, Ikea to be doing murals on underpasses. Why don't you guys as a collective take it on? Um, and we said, sure. So that is how New Spiral came about. And you in Fairhaven have two murals going up on Grand Ave um, right before Me King in that underpass. And then you also have a mural on Front Street in Middletown as well going up um, on that. Uh, and we're going to present to you tonight the two uh, designs that we came up with, not us, the artists themselves came up with. And how we did this process, we uh, sent out um, ads and uh, what would, you, what would you call it? I have the word for it, but I'm forgetting it right now. A prompt. You sent out a prompt of what does liberation look like for black and brown folks um, and poor folks. And so artists from all over New Haven reached out and submitted things. Uh, this one is Demary Douglas for Front Street. Um, and she would, all the artists here were picked by community members. So we didn't have any stake in it. Uh, it was picked by community members that we also paid because that's part of our process is being equitable is paying people for their time. Um, and so, yeah, so this one is an astronaut putting a crown on a young African-American girl. Uh, and then the second one is Carlos Perez on Grand Ave. Um, his is a day in the park. So these are the two pieces that will be going up on in these spaces as we're talking about adding art and culture to Fairhaven. Um, and these are also New Haven natives. So any questions, any thoughts, feelings? Uh Isaac, I'm just gonna add a couple of things. Um, we wanted to let you know that part of our um, mission is to have community paint days. Um, 
for at least the, the majority of the murals. So the community paint day for Front Street is gonna be in June, June 25th, which is a Saturday. Um, and for Grand Ave will be July 16th, um, which is another Saturday. And that's a chance for folks to come out and have a hand in painting the murals themselves and get to meet the artists. They're gonna be really fun days. Um, kids are more than welcome. Isaac is a pro at um, doing community paint days with kids. So um, if you follow our social media, the, we'll have more announcements about that as we get closer. And um, ways that y'all can help other than all the support we've received thus far. I mean, I know that there's a Lieutenant um, on the call right now, but it just, it feels important to us to alert local officials, especially the police department that this is happening. Make sure it's on your radar. Our artists will be out there painting. It is pre-approved um, and they'll have a permit on them um, at all times. And please, if you have any questions, obviously we're here to answer any now and stay in touch. This is our email right here. And just again, like, so you guys can see that's Front Street and that's Grand Ave. And I think y'all are familiar with Perez. He goes by Perez, but. Um, yeah. I see. Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, so I just want everybody to be clear, not only about the dates, but exactly where this is gonna happen. So the Front Street one, is at the intersection of Front Street with Middletown Avenue, mm -hmm. under the highway as you're oh. as you're leaving Fairhaven with the river on your right mm -hmm. and Quinnipiac Terrace on your left. The wall that's on the left on the side that Quinnipiac Terrace is on is that correct? Yep, exactly. Yes. Across from yeah, across from the river. Then would you please describe Grand Avenue exactly where that's going to be? So if you're in front of Meat King and you look at the underpass right there, it's going to be that underpass oh, between Meat King and uh, there's a restaurant. I'm forgetting the name of the restaurant. Adriana's, Adriana. I believe it is. Adriana. It's that underpass. Adriana. It's yeah. Adriana. So in between Adriana's and Meat King's, that's where the underpass or the mural for that underpass will be. Perfect. And, and will it be on the side of the street where the Meat King is or on the on the side of the street where the restaurant is side of me king okay so that that's the southern wall so as you're leaving Fairhaven, you go by what is uh used to be um Ferrer. yeah by, for, by by what used to be ferraro's now called the meat king yeah it's going to be on that side of the street underneath the highway yep so that was on the left hand side yep. yeah okay so do we have any questions from anyone who's on Zoom? If you would like to help, we are gonna put that email address onto the, um, onto the um, uh, notes that we provide so that you can reach out and be a part of that. Um, I am gonna share with the artists that we have other experiences painting murals here in, in uh, Fairhaven. Uh, the one we painted on the Strong School, the one at Lewis Street Park. And one of the things that we found helpful is to make a request of the police for a police cruiser to be placed at the location where you're painting and the police go away. They don't have to stay there all day. They put the cruiser there and it is amazing. Just the fact that the police car is there with no one in it and all the cars that they approach they slow down so it's just something to think about and it's a request that you would make to uh i guess to lieutenant Cuniati, who's our district manager uh we did that for the strong school mural which is on grand avenue and it radically changed the safety level in terms of cars zooming by which is a concern with their their children any questions or comments on zoom i see none okay Great. Okay, so we're going to move along. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joy and uh, I'm sorry. I think, oh, yeah, Isaac. Isaac. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Isaac. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Okay, so now I'm going to call on myself for five minutes less, I'm sure, I'm positive, for Quinnipiac River Fest. So, Quinnipiac River Fest is a festival that we started at the Quinnipiac Marina. Uh, I want to say about 10 years ago, and then we haven't done it now during COVID. We're bringing it back. It's Saturday, June 4th from 1 to 6. 
if it rains, then we would just move it to Sunday, same time, one to six. Saturday, June 4th is the date. We're going to have local artists um, vending at tables. If you are an artist or an artisan, then we would like to have you um, come and sell at Riverfest. If you sell Mary Kay Cosmetics or, you know, Herbalife, this is not the place for you. We're looking for people that make things with their own hands or within their family, somebody makes them and they're either art or artisans. And then we would um, make it possible for you to have a table. There is a charge of $20 for a table to make sure that people show up and you can sell. In addition to that, there's gonna be music, there's going to be beer tasting. There's going to be canoes and kayaks to go out on the river safely with people from the parks department. We're going to have um, food there. The food is the only thing that will have to be paid for. Everything else is free. All of this is being provided by local businesses. The website for this event is quinnipiacriverfest.com. QuinnipiacRiverFest.com. You'll see all the sponsors. You'll see all the things that we have planned for that day. Any yeah. questions? Yeah, it's going to be located by the, the, the restaurant that you see yeah. over there. It's Correct. Going to be, oh, okay. uh, it's going to be, thank you for asking. This is at Quinnipiac Marina. The, ad, the street address is 309, 309 Front Street. All of that is at QuinnipiacRiverFest.com. And it will also be in the minutes, thanks to Lisa. Any questions? Any other questions in the room? Any questions on Zoom? It was literally where is it exactly? So, yep. So just answer. Friend Street. Okay, so then we're going to. Question. Yes. My information. Um, I think there was an agenda item right before the New Haven Friends meeting. Oh, I am sorry. I did not. I, I need to put my glasses. I need to clean my glasses. I apologize. I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. And so we have Maureen Lopes from the um, uh, talking about a, a very important community service project from the New Haven Friends meeting. Maureen, please unmute yourself and, and present. I apologize for not seeing you. Well, actually, Lee, your information was very helpful. Um, so I'm here from the Racial Justice Working Group at uh, New Haven Friends up the road there in Grand, East Grand Avenue. Um, and we were conscious of the fact that May 25th represents the second anniversary of the loss of George Floyd. And we thought that we would like to make this a day of, um, or around that date of community service in our local Fair Haven community. Um, so I was coming tonight to look for some ideas. We didn't feel we needed to create another activity. It's already so wonderfully busy in Fair Haven. So, um, and what I'm gonna do as soon as I finish talking, I will put my contact information in the chat so that you can get back to me. But I'm already thinking that that June 25th mural painting uh, might be great. We, um, we certainly have you know older uh, grammar school age kids that could really get into something like that. And of course, it's just been everything shut down. So that would be a great outdoor. Um, Lee, would there be volunteer people that you would need at the River Fest? We're already involved uh, in the family stroll, so that's already set. Okay, yep. So we can talk about that. Why don't we to not wait okay. to uh, here with other people? Yes, uh, let's talk. Okay. That'd be good. And then if others have ideas of, um, let's just say in that May to June time frame, um, I'm going to put in my contact information and it'd be great to hear from everyone. Thank you so much. Maureen, thank you very much. Uh, any any questions here in the room? Any questions on Zoom? We thank you very much, Maureen. We'll, we'll be in touch. And now, uh, Kirk Morrison from the library is live here at the library. Take it away, Kirk. Hello, everyone. Um, 
don't don't let this Zoom call uh, fool you. Uh, we want you to come here to the library for all of our events. Uh, and I have a few uh, now that uh, we can have larger gatherings. Again, we've got quite a bit that's uh, coming up. Uh, first, wanted to let you know that if you've uh, been watching any of those uh, Find Your Roots type shows on TV for, and wanted to get started on genealogy, uh, come here Saturday morning, so this Saturday at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a uh, workshop on getting started on genealogy. It's free. I hope to see you at that. Um, our uh, youth librarian, uh, Jenny, has uh, brought back uh, by popular demand our uh, stay in play. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for pre-Ks where they have a, a story, uh, a chance to sing, and a chance to move around a little bit. Um, it's going to be at its uh, pre-pandemic uh, time of Tuesdays at 10.30 each, each week uh, right here. Um, just today, we started to provide uh, in-house uh, social services assistance through, uh, 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 through uh, Laquella Gibbs of Liberty Community Services. Uh, she'll be here Thursdays from 12 to 4.30. And if you know anyone who's having issues with a variety of things, housing, uh, employment, uh, basic needs, uh, she can uh, assist or, make, or help uh, people get referrals. She'll be, uh, she'll be right here doing office hours uh, weekly. As I said, Thursdays, uh, 12 to 4.30. Um, and and uh, finally, um, although we have a, plenty of other things coming up before then, um, we're right here. We're very excited to be one of the venues in the Art, uh, Festival of Arts and Ideas. <coughs> and on uh, Saturday, June 18th, uh, right here, right in this room, um, we're going to be hosting a, uh, a, a nationally uh, award-winning uh, storyteller. Uh, named uh, Nestor the Boss Gomez, and uh, and he will, will be uh, he will be here. Um, uh, if I when I get a chance, I'm going to put in the chat session that he's actually looking to recruit uh, five Spanish speaking uh, local residents that he's going to work with uh, prior to uh, when he arrives on June 18th to uh, uh, craft uh, stories from their own lives, uh, which will be part of that event. Uh, so if you know someone who uh, might like to uh, take part in that, uh, that particular part, uh, I'll put the um, I'll put the info in the uh, chat session. It's a link from uh, the Festival of Arts and Ideas. But everyone's welcome to come to the, that Arts and Ideas event that we will be hosting here on June 18th. I uh, hope to see you uh, soon right here at the library. Thank you very much for that report, uh, Kirk. And uh, if you haven't noticed it, if you're on Zoom, you haven't noticed that all of us here at the library are wearing our mask. That is required. So if you um, want to come take advantage of the services of the library and you have any reservations, please know that you will be safe in the library. If you happen to forget your mask, they are very kind here. They have masks available for you. So please come down to the library and uh, get take advantage of all the services and all the programs that are available. Any questions on Zoom? I see none. Okay. Any questions in the room about Kirk's report or anything happening at the library? Okay, I don't see any here. So we're gonna move on with our agenda. And uh, let me just ask one final time before we go to the next section of the agenda, have we come? Anywhere close to four? Uh, no, uh, it, it, we're not going to hit it tonight. No. Okay. It's pretty much impossible. <laughs> okay, next time. So here we go. So uh, let's just run through our alders here to see if anyone is with us. Uh, Alder Ellen Kupo, Ward 8. I'll also point out for those of you that have the agenda electronically that there is a place you can click if you don't know who your alder is. There is a place you can click on the agenda and put your address in. It'll tell you who your alder is. Uh, alder Cooper is not with us. That's not much of a surprise. She just recently had a baby. Oh, yeah. uh, so, so just remind you of that. And if you're a constituent or if you're just generally a nice person, want to say congratulations. Her uh, email address is on the agenda. I believe she had a baby girl. Oh, okay. uh, alder Charles Decker. Uh, do not see in the chat. Alder Anna Festa. 
Alder Sarah Miller. I know she's not here because I happen to be married uh, to her. And uh, but she did submit a report, and that report is in the hands of our correspondence secretary. Uh, would you please read any highlights uh, that you think might be relevant, Abby? Yes. Hi, everyone. So again, Alder Miller sent her report to us by letter. Um, I will send this out in the meeting follow-up email, so I'll just give you the highlights now. Um, you've heard about the harm reduction that's getting going and more information is here. We encourage you to fill out the survey. Um, the strong school redevelopment, as you heard Kathleen Krolak say, <coughs> there'll be a request for proposal for developers to submit um, applications, which is great. Um, Alder Miller's been working really hard on the um, the Quinnipiac River Park um, development. So you might have seen that they've, they've had some improvements. There was a bike station um, installed. There's been improvements to the sidewalk or to the pots. So that's great. Um, more information on that here. And the, Gravenue, the Grand Avenue Main Street development. Um, she's working with city stakeholders to review lighting, walkways, safety, public art, all kinds of things along Grand Avenue. Um, so that's long overdue and we're grateful to her for doing that. Um, and then so many things that you've heard about upcoming events. You could just go to one every few, couple every week, every week if you wanted to. So those are all listed. Um, Fairhaven Family Stroll, Riverfest, Community Parade, Community Meeting, the new Spiral events, just a lot going on. Um, and those are the highlights, but I will send this full letter out. Um, and also, I encourage you to get on Alder Miller's email list, um, which I, I'll put the link in the chat to sign up for her newsletter because that's really helpful. So that's all from that's all from me. Thank you very much, Abby. Um, Alder Ernie Santiago, uh, not in the chat. Alder Jose Crespo, not in chat. Okay. So now we're going to finally move to the uh, other announcements. And uh, we did receive a request from Kate Cooney from uh, uh, Yale School for Organizational Management to make an announcement about something that's re relevant to our community. Kate, are you all with us? And if so, are you with us? Hi, I am at the uh, Westville. Art walk, so that's Tabisa in the background. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but um, it's great to be here and hear all the exciting things that's going on in, in Fairhaven. I just wanted to let you know about a online webinar we're having out of the Inclusive Economic Development Lab at the Yale School of Management, and we're going to be we're going to be sharing out information about a new economic development tool that we've learned about, and part of our mission is to build bridges out of the university into the community. And so we, um, the students are gonna be sharing two case studies about this new tool called a neighborhood trust, which is kind of like a community land trust, but it's a little different in some very interesting ways and it's being experimented with in Philadelphia and, um, and also in Texas. And, it's a way for neighborhoods to get some control over some of the economic development processes. And it can be a wealth building tool or it could be a tool for anchoring in affordability, both commercial and residential. So if you're interested, please join us Friday, May 13th at 9.30 and I'll see if I can repost the info right at the bottom of the chat. So you have it. Um, we'd love to connect with folks in Fairhaven who are working on these issues. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. If, if we kind of heard you. It'd be great if you put the information in the chat and also send it to fairhavencmt at gmail.com. So we make sure we put the information accurately in the, in the uh, minutes of the meeting. Okay, I'll okay. do that, Lee. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. Okay, so very quickly, a few uh, more announcements. Uh, there is a Ferry Street redesign meeting on May 11th at 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Fairhaven, uh, I'm sorry, Ferry Street. If you live in that area and want to talk about the redesign that will be going on, the money is in the pot. They just need to do the planning. So please uh, join that meeting. 
and uh, that will be in the minutes, and it's also in uh, Alder Miller's report. Next uh, announcement, urban resources initiative. Some people know their program as Green Space, Garden and Green Space. They are going to celebrate here in Fairhaven at Quinnipiac Park the planting of the 10,000th tree. They have planted 10,000 trees in um in in new haven and uh, or they will on friday they will have planted ten thousand. so if you'd like to be there for that it's on friday the 13th at 10 30 in the morning at quinnipiac river park right on the water right on front street then uh it was mentioned before but i'll just mention quickly fairhaven family stroll a festival and fundraiser for early childhood education will be the very next day, May 14th, from 10 to 2. And then if you're in a party mood, you go from that festival, 10 to 2 on Saturday the 14th, to the next festival, which will be on Blatchley Avenue in front of the old Columbus School, now called Fame. And that festival will run from 2 to 6. So on, 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 on Saturday the 14th, you can party basically from 10 in the morning to six o'clock at night. Both events will have food, uh, activities for children. The afternoon event will have more uh, music for adults and for children. The one in the morning is more oriented toward children, 10 and under. Then uh, the next announcement uh, is from uh, Mary Wayholm. So I'll turn it over to Lisa for that. Um, so we're we're hosting our annual Fairhaven Community Day Parade, starting out of Chatham Square Park at 10.30 in the morning. And um, uh, the city school children have been invited to parade. We have approximately 700 uh, students and organizations signed up. Um, so the entire community is invited to, to um, cheer on the paraders and celebrate the start of summer. What day is there again? May 20, Friday, May 27th. Thank you. Friday, May 27th, starting at 10.30. Amazing. And then uh, just to round things up, uh, just Two days after our next meeting in May on the 4th is Riverfest. Yeah. So we have a ton of great activities going on in our community. We're dealing with our problems and we're also celebrating and acknowledging all the great things going on in our community. All of the announcements you heard will be in the minutes and uh, that really concludes our agenda. Uh, if anyone has any comments, uh, suggestions for improvement. I think I can safely say that this meeting was an improvement over the one last month from a technology standpoint, not a judgment of anything other than the technology. It keeps getting better and better. But the key to doing all this work, the reason why we're doing it is so that you have a choice. You can be online or you can be here. We'd love to have you come down to the library. It's safe to be here. And uh, there's been about nine, there was nine or ten of us at one point here at the library. And there's but candy. oh, there's also candy at the library, which you're not going to get over Zoom. We haven't figured out that. So please join us at the library or join us on Zoom. But also please talk to people. Our our attendance has gone down. So think about who you know that you've seen on Zoom or who's not here at the library, and please invite them to our next meeting, which will be on Thursday, June uh, 2nd. With that, uh, are there any questions or comments on the chat? Uh, as I say, uh, Dave, do you want me to bring your, your chat question or do you wanna bring your chat question to the room? Sure. Sorry, I have a baby who's sleeping, but I'll voice my words. Um, yeah, I just want to say that running hybrid meetings is a ton of work. Um, and I've experienced this as being done super professionally, better than I've seen any hybrid meeting happen for a long time. And I'm really grateful for all of that. And I want to wonder and question whether we should just be doing online for now if the demand is not there. I think there's a ton of 
reason to meet in person when we want to do brainstorming, when we want to be gathering and trying to like make sense of things and make decisions. But if right now we're in a place where our meetings are deeply discussion-based and sharing reports and asking for feedback, I, I wonder if we can accomplish what we need to accomplish without the significant work that goes into making this meeting happen hybridly. Um, that's being said from someone who's, who's home. Okay, so thank you, David. We will take it under advisement at the executive committee. Uh, any other questions or comments before we conclude? Uh, Sunday's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Mother's Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day to all the moms. And with that, if I could please have a motion to adjourn. Move I move. I will move. Second, okay, second by Abby. No need for the, the, the meeting has form. concluded. Go in peace, and we'll see you next month. Take care. Bye-bye, right. everyone. Good night. Hello, everyone. <laughs>